Edinburgh, the Athens of the North, Old Reiki, the festival city. Whatever they call it, each year millions of visitors are attracted to the jewel in the Scottish Tourist Board's crown. But Scotland's capital is also home to a famous football club, a glorious football club, which rejoices in the name of Hibernian. On St Patrick's Day 1991, Edinburgh's Sheraton Hotel was the venue as players past and present gathered with fans for a glittering appreciation dinner in honour of one of Hibernian's greatest and best-loved footballing sons. Following sterling efforts by the organising committee, the pieces of the jigsaw were about to be set in place for what was to prove an unforgettable occasion. For Pat Stanton, the evening was a chance to meet old friends and no doubt to reflect nostalgically on a career which saw him give magnificent service to Hibernian for 14 years, play 16 times for his country and in the twilight of that illustrious career win Scottish Cup and Championship badges with Celtic. Yes, it was an evening for everyone to recall the special talents of the great Pat Stanton as well as to remember affectionately those other great stars whose skills had graced the hallowed turf of Easter Road and brought such glory and prestige to the name of Hibernian. Stars like, for instance, Gordon Smith, Bobby Johnston, Laurie Riley, Eddie Turnbull and Willie Ormond. Known collectively as the famous five, they made up the greatest club forward line in the history of British football. situations. There's five men in the box. In goes Stanton. He's done it again. 21 and a half minutes. A Valdi and one. Other well nil. Uh, one will be asked along here to pay a tribute to Pat because he's been a friend of mine for many, many years, as many of the older hips players are. I'm getting the young ones in over, but that's an offence. <laughs> invited along tonight and I, I said to myself well there's two absolutely wonderful comics on the boat tonight Bill Barker and Gary that's been here so I decided to be a wee bit different tonight so what I did I got some recess that I'd like to thank David Hardy for from the Evening News he sent me uh, through a lot of bump on Pat so I wrote this wee monologue it's my tribute and your tribute to Pat Stanton go some of this he's a gentleman and a scholar I'm sure you will agree he arrived at Easter Road in 1963 he made a scoring debut, Motherwell was the game. It was the birth of a high legend, Pat Stanton was the name. He played it inside left that day, but was soon to play a lot deeper. In fact, when the 4-2-4 formation came in, Pat was Hibbs for sweeper. A partnership was formed that day that became a formidable three. There was Pat himself, John Manson the Dane, and Johnny McNamee. Pat was great at tackling, always steadfast and sure, and Tommy Doctor, he once stated that he was better than Bobby Moore. He won his first cap against the Danes in 1966, and Craig Ivicia was quoted as saying that our Pat was a box of tricks. It was early in the 70s, Pat took over the captain's role, and some silverware for Hibbs Trophy Room became his immediate goal. Victory was not far away, and for the Hibs fans it was nice. For the Highways won the drive at a cup. Not just once, but twice. <laughs> the icing soon topped the cake 
as every Hepstein knew when Hibernian won the League Cup in 1972. Pat beat on one of the goals and scored it out of himself. And suddenly Hibernian Football Club were in the best of health. Alas, came that awful time when Easter Road grew dark. That dreadful day in 76 when Pat left for Celtic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Grown up men cried that day, there were tears in many an eye. How can you let Pat Stanton go? You could hear the fans all cry. But that's the way that football goes. You cannot dwell in the past. So, as a legend, as I took into a legend, Hibs flew their flags half mast. Two fruitful years Pat spent with that team from through the West. And when we next day played at Easter Road, we saw Pat at his best. Alas, our Pat became unwell. He was past his cell by date. So he retired from playing football in 1978. But football was in Pat's blood, or so it would truly seem. For then Pat came assistant up at Aberdeen. Many a success came Pat's way while in the Granite City. But everyone wants to be their own man when you get down to the nitty gritty. Pat's an Edinburgh man, born and bred, so back him he came to be boss instead. He was boss at Dunfermline and again at Cowden Beef, and suddenly Pat Stanton took the bit between his teeth. He met with Chairman Kenny Walk, and a dream was realised. Pat was manager of Hibernian. Surprise, surprise, surprise. To manage a team like Hibs, of course, you must have cash in hand. And directors must realize only one man leads a band. No funds were made available, no new players signed. So in the year of 1984, our champion resigned. A scholar and a gentleman is our man Pat. Thousands of Hibs fans will testify to that. He arrived at Easter Road in 1963. He gave much joy and pleasure for everyone to see. He's a friend to many of you out there, and also a friend of mine. Gentlemen, I give you Pat Stanton, a legend in his time. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Pat Stanton, uh, obviously when I joined him, was one of the great, great names in Scottish football. And certainly, I was not disappointed when I played with him because then I had a chance to admire his skill. But also Pat had a very sort of wry sense of humour. And, uh, and he exploited that very, very often. And one time we set him up, actually. Pat used to wear this raincoat when the programme Columbo was emerging in America in the in sort of middle 70s. He used to wear it at training, of course, and the players would give him a bit of stick. But of course, Pat, determined as he was, would decide that, call me Columbo if you like, but I'm going to wear this raincoat. So that uh, there was a programme starting on Radio Forth at the time, uh, which was hosted by George Farm, which used to bring in a personality and interview them about the pro their prospects for that game on a Saturday. So we were sitting in the North British Hotel in Edinburgh, and Pat was a guest on that day. And we got Big Roy Barry, who could put on a good English accent, to phone up. So they get through, get through to the programme, of course, and it's George Farms. There's another caller here, Big Joe Barry, from, uh, who lives in Pennycook. And of course, uh, Big Roy says to him, Hello there, Pat. And uh, the accent's messed up, so he put on this Irish accent. Hello there, Pat. It says, uh, now, you're one of the great players in Scottish football. Do you think it's important what people wear off the park? Of course, Pat's saying, well, it's, it's important, he said, but at the end of the day, it's what you do on the park uh, that counts, and we shouldn't concern ourselves too much. But there's a rumour going about in Edinburgh, Pat, that you look like Columbo. And, of course, Pat's straining. He said, uh, what do you mean? Well, you wear this dirty old raincoat to training all the time. And, of course, George Farm. He was in hysterics at the time because he didn't want anybody to know, of course, that uh, this caller might have been known. So Pat started saying, I know those people in the background, that's the hip squad, that's the hip squad at the present time, you know. And of course, this hail of laughter came from the background and the programme, the caller was cut off immediately. But uh, this dinner tonight, of course, is an honour of Pat and there's going to be many great names from the Hibernian past that I'll talk to in informal conversation. And I'm sure they'll reveal one or two things about Pat that you, the punter, didn't know about. Joe, you were a great player with, uh, in both England and Italy. Why the great affection for Hibs? Well, Hibs was my first club uh, when I started playing football, and uh, you never get away from that, Tony. You know, your first 
club is always your first love. And what the supporters done for me when I was a kid, say 16, 17, when I started in the team, they really gave us support, which was badly needed, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I really enjoyed it then. Well, what's, what special memories of Easter Road? What particular games spring to mind when you think back in your past there? Special memories was, uh, I'd reckon, the Peebles game when I scored nine. <laughs> nine goals? Nine goals, <laughs> yeah. Took me a to score that. <laughs> <laughs> in the one game, I, uh -huh. why it was a special memory? Because what used to uh, rile me up and get my adrenaline going was uh, the media newspapers used to print maybe on the Wednesday or Thursday before the game that uh, the centre half wasn't going to give you a kick at the ball. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, from then, being a kid, it used to rile me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by the time Saturday came at three o'clock, I was ready to go. Mm -hmm. I was like a wound up clock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, uh -huh, uh -huh. just let me off. Ready on spring, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing, I was just putting it in the net. <laughs> and, I, and I got to nine and, and uh, they were saying, you better slow up, Joe. I says, no, the game's not finished yet, the referee's not blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, we were here to honour Pat Stanton, and yeah. of course, Pat was a great Hibs player and Scotland player. Where do you rank him and the players that you've played against and alongside? Pat was a very, how can you put it, class duck out of Pat Mile. He played the ball, he had a great vision of the game, if you know what I mean. He'd, he'd pull the ball down nice and he'd play it, the wing nice and he'd get it back. And he was a playmaker. In every sense of the word, Tony, every sense of the word, he was a playmaker. And he, he went from there to Celtic. And I was surprised, actually, because I thought he'd have finished his days with Hibs, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he got a few honours with Celtic, and then he became manager of Hibs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I was very sorry to see him mm -hmm. uh, resign from. Mm -hmm. Because I think if he'd have stayed there a little bit longer, he would have got a chance. Also, one other great Hibs favourite you were involved with uh, as a manager in your latter years was Eddie Turnbull, the very eloquent Eddie. Ned. 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 Uh, oh. How did you feel being your... Very quiet, man. Very quiet, man. I Ned. was, yeah. Uh -huh. You bastard, get away from here. <laughs> <laughs> very quiet, man, Ned was, aye. Yeah, yeah. Any uh, fond memories of Eddie? Eddie, uh, how could I put it? I played with Eddie to start with, mm -hmm. right? And he kept me right on the field as far as shouting was concerned. And when he shouted, he shouted. Mm -hmm. He heard him. Mm -hmm. And then he became them. I trained under Eddie. Mm -hmm. And he was very hard. Mm -hmm. Which was a good day. Grounding for me, as you put it. Mm -hmm. If you're grounded that way and get good discipline about your play, you become a good player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which possibly, by the way, lads, if you're going to watch this, the Albion Rovers, I'll tell you, I'm telling the truth. If you don't agree, and don't listen to coaches and managers, you'll never get anywhere. Mm. Carry on, Tony. Carry on, The great, I mean, obviously you play with some great characters at the Hibs. Uh, yeah. Any funny stories about some of those great characters? Uh, well, it was funny when uh, Ned, Eddie Turnbull took over the trainer, and, and God rest him, Willie Orman was, uh, he was still playing at the time. And Willie came to me and he says, uh, Joey, he says, did you hear? He says, that's Eddie getting he's, he's the coach now. He says, next year, we're OK, he says, I've played with him. He says, we'll not get any training at all. The first two days, while he's over the wall, spewing his guts out, he's, oh, he says, you bastard, Ned. He says, he says, you're killing us. <laughs> There's a funny story, too, about uh, Wally Orman. I'll never forget that. I w I'd been there four seasons. I think I scored about 160 goals or something. Four seasons? Yeah. And uh, he says to me, Joe, he says, hey, I hope you don't mind me asking, he says, but what do you make a week here? Mm -hmm. I says, well, usual, I says, £12. Mm -hmm. He says, for four seasons? I says, yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, well, see this year, he says, ask for a rise. Mm -hmm. So I went up the stairs, usual, I just signed to play football, mm -hmm. which we'd done years ago, mm -hmm. and there was no really money involved, I just enjoyed playing the game. Yeah, yeah. And he goes up the stairs, and this is in the back of my mind that uh, Wally Orman said, that's for a rise. So I goes in front and Shuey Shaw goes rest him and we Harry Swan, the chairman. They're standing there. Well, Joe, there's the formal son, just sign there. I says, no, I'm not signing it. I want a rise. Mm -hmm. And we Harry Swan, he, she looked at me like that and goes, you're what? <laughs> I says, I want a rise. She says, what did you want? Uh -huh. uh, and it caught me, because uh -huh. I hadn't a clue. Uh -huh. Uh, I said a fiver. Uh -huh. Give me a fiver. Uh -huh. I'll sign the form for a fiver. Uh -huh. Oh, he said, I don't know about that. He says, we'll have to think about it. So I come down the stairs again, me, Wally, says to him. Wally says, did you get the fiver? 
I says, no, mm -hmm. they're thinking about it. <laughs> but two days later, Tony, mm -hmm. in the paper, we can't meet Baker's demands. Yeah, yeah. They were selling me to Turin. <laughs> I didn't want to go. <laughs> So the secret was, if Hibs had paid you that fiver, you might have been still yeah. there, you might have been still there. I still yeah. been there, yeah. OK, Joe, thank you very much for the time given, and uh, we hope you enjoy your night tonight. Pleasure, and the, the memory for me, yeah, I mean, yeah. I played with you as a player, and you were a great player, and obviously the time I saw you kissing the turf yeah. at Easter Road. Thanks well, very Tony, much. by the time you become my age, you know, I'll be 40 stone, probably. You'll be 36. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Joe Baker. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I think coming from the part of Edinburgh that I came from, and uh, I think it was always your ambition to play for the Hibs, and when it did happen, you, you were very proud, you know, it was mm -hmm. something that you, you'd always thought about, but you never maybe really thought it would come about, but when it did, it was terrific. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, during that time as well, you played with many great, great players and some great characters. Who in your estimation was the best player out of that, that group that you played with? Well, I think over the years, there's, you know, Hibs have had some great players, and I've managed to... Uh, either play against or with them. Um, I remember one of my early games, when about my third first team game, I actually played against Gordon Smith. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Gordon Smith to me was, uh, oh, you know, oh. I'd, I actually hadn't seen much of him yeah. playing, but yeah. I'd heard my, my father and my brothers always talking about yeah. him. But my experience, uh, I thought Willie Hamilton was one of the best players I ever saw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Marvellous talent. Yeah. Uh, maybe a bit uh, unfortunate he didn't use the, the talent to his best, mm -hmm. but there was, uh, yeah, every time you think about uh, you know, the, the way he played, uh, uh, you got a good feeling when you saw him play. And also the characters, there must be some funny stories about some of the players that you played with in, in Easter Road in your time, you know, excluding uh, me. <laughs> well, I, was, I, was, I wasn't going to say anything, but you, know, you got all silly things happening, but I remember, funny, you know, this is St. Patrick's Day, but I remember we were playing in Iceland and we had an Irish referee. And he came in before the game and, you know, the normal procedure, the referee inspects the boots and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then just as he was leaving the, 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 the dress room, he said, well, remember, lads, have a good game, play the whistle, and remember, he said, accept my decisions whether I give them or not. <laughs> right. And you had to think hard about that. And he had a good game, the referee. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it remembers me talking about the European tour. It's one of the great ones when, when I remember. I remember Johnny Hamilton dingy. Uh, the glass region in, in we dingy was going shopping one day and he asked if he got a loan of Tommy Younger's jacket. <laughs> I don't know what quite he was going to do with it, but I have my suspicions. <laughs> now, of course, we rookie was a special friend of you, you know, you knew him at school and right through. I mean, Jimmy was a great player, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, Jimmy was a, an underrated player with the hips. Um, very good player, great knowledge of the game. Um, but I knew Jimmy, I, we went to the same school. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy, his debut was at 16 year old. Yeah. Outstanding ability, and he, he was unlucky that he got a bad injury early in his career, uh, and it, it was quite a bad one. And he, but he overcame all that. But it, it, it happened just at a time in his career when he really could have done without it. But he still became a great player. And obviously, the special memory for you and Jimmy, of course, was uh, in the 1972 League Cup final. Oh, that's right. Aye. That's right. And uh, one of the, uh, the, the what I remember about that game, we, we got on the team bus at Easter Road, but as we went up Easter Road, a, 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 wee, a wee kid standing outside the street threw a brick and smashed the back window of the bus. And it was a freezing cold day going through that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally you're all sitting on the bus and it's warm, but we, there's nobody sleeping in that bus. <laughs> By the time we got to Hamden, we were all wide awake. Uh, yeah. I think maybe Eddie thought he smashed the window a bit more, you know? <laughs> That's probably a bit of fact, been Eddie, for knowing that, probably been throwing bricks every week at team buses as a, <laughs> as a part of success, yeah. As was evidenced last close season there, Pat, the Hibs fans are a special breed. They had a special relationship with you. How do you feel about them? Oh, well, the fans have been great to me over the years. You know, even... Uh, I've been away from Easter Road a long time now, and uh, I still, they're still very good to me, you know? And that's what made, uh, well, you saw last summer what happened. Um, I felt sorry for the, what happened last, what, what might have happened. But these people just uh, dug their heels in and uh, refused to let go. It was a, it came right out of the blue. Um, but really, I felt hard sorry for the people. Well, that's the reason we're here tonight, Pat, the, the football supporters, the people that love Pat Stanton. Uh, we're going to honour you tonight, and also we hope this is a great success, and the video is a great success as well. Thanks very much, Pat, for all you've done for Scottish football and for Hibs. Thanks, Tony. 1972 was an eventful year for football. Celtic, totally against the run of play, of course, scored six breakaway goals as they defeated Dear Old Tabernian in the Scottish Cup final at Hampden Park. 
Glasgow Rangers became the second Scottish side to win a major European tournament when, in Barcelona, they beat Moscow Dynamo in the Cup Winners' Cup final. Jammy as ever, England scraped home against Scotland at Hamden when a single goal from Arsenal's Alan Ball was enough to shatter the Tartan army and cause those lion rampants to flutter at half-mast. But, much more importantly, and with the old year drawing to a close, Hibs were back at Hamden. Again, their opponents were Celtic, this time in the Scottish League Cup final. It was to be one of the greatest days in the history of the Easter Road Club. Well, Robert, Stanton up on his feet quickly for the return pass. Stanton coming through. Gordon trying to give him a return, doesn't succeed. It's clear, but only as far as Brownlee. It was back to Brownlee. Brownlee making room for himself, working his way through. Good tackle by Hay. Hib still have it though. Tenacious Edwards. Back to Blank. Long forward toward Gordon. Free kick to him just outside the box. would imagine that Alec Edwards would somehow try to mastermind this situation. Or up from Stanton there. Morok leaves it to Edwards. Edwards chips it forward. Chance for Stanton. It's a goal. Stanton scores. 15 minutes in the second half. A classic free kick situation. On a root dummy, Edwards love forward. Stanton walking round the keeper, bind the ball into the net from not an easy angle. And that's the first goal of the match. Superbly taken by hip skipper Pat Stanton. Headed down by Black. Good racing for it. Breaks to McCluskey. Comes to a root. And Crockley really moving. McGrain challenging well, though. Fine play by Danny McGrain under real pressure there. My goodness, Alec Crockley certainly shifted to get to that one. Duncan infield, lovely ball to Stanton. Stanton forcing his way through. Stanton for Hibbs outside the box, dispossessed. Breaks to the right. Edwards thinks about a shot, lets one go, breaks towards Brownlee, Connolly onto it quickly, Brownlee challenging, Connolly beats him nicely, up towards the halfway line, Black and Hood thrusting for it, comes to Edwards, what a game now. Edwards takes the ball for a long walk, keeps possession though, finally loses it. This is McCluskey, the hard-working McCluskey stepping in, beats Edwards beautifully, head down, down the line, Shadler challenging, McCluskey up very quickly, Shadler there, back to Herriot, a tremendous game now. Picked up by Stanton. Stanton out to Edwards. Never stands still for a second. Edwards back to Stanton. Beautiful ball. Uruk's clear. Stanton lofting it across. Uruk. What a goal! What a goal! Magnificent goal by Jim Uruk. He's away behind the goal. There he is. A superb cross from Stanton. Edwards, Stanton, Uruk. 2-0. 21 minutes played in the second half. A magnificent goal. Brownlee punching it down deep into the Celtic half. Headed down by McCluskey. Stanton with a touch. Shadler. Out to Duncan. Duncan cutting infield. Still has it. Loses it to McCarry, but referee says a free kick. Play, taking a little bit of time before he takes it, sweeps it away to the far side to Brownlee. Brownlee lofting it across, Stanton's there. Chance for Gordon, stopped on the line. Uruk. Another defence splitting move by Hibernian. 
superb move. Good. Black. Back to Harriet. Gordon. Stanton. Stanton. Typical Stanton pass for the outside of the boot to Duncan. Duncan making a beeline for the goal. Overrunning it though. He stepping in. Out to Connolly. And there's a chance here. Douglish played onside by Shadler. Douglish should score, and he does. Magnificent goal by Celtic's best forward. Minute to play. Now Duncan still has it at Celtic's throw. <laughs> Danny McGrain miscuing. Throw to Hibbs. Moving inside the last minute of the match. Stanton. Down towards the corner flag. Who's up first? Stanton. Edwards. Astonishing ball control by Stanton and Edwards there. Right on the byline. And a free kick to Celtic. Referee saying to Hay and Edwards, shake hands. The handshakes are genuine. The tensions and pressures of a cup final reflected there both players it's been an extremely clean and sporting match and it's almost over Celtic throw and it's time up now I make it time up, Mr. McKenzie looking at his watch. Ball long forward there. And it's all over. And at last, Hibbs win the Scottish League Cup. Magnificent effort by Hibbs. Stanton going across there with the team over to where the Hibbs supporters are in the terracing. Celtic magnificent losers. What a pity that one team has to lose in such a superb game. A fine adornment to all that's best in Scottish football. A fine effort by Hibbs, the happiest player there, Pat Stanton, leading his team over to where the Hibbs supporters are massed. And there they are, waving to them. Great jubilation. Third time lucky for Hibernian. Beaten in the 1950-51 final by Motherwell beaten in the 68-69 final by Celtic they've at last come good and won the Scottish League Cup for the very first time in their history Celtic standing patiently to the right every Celtic player is shaking the hand of every Hibs player and Hibs are absolutely beside themselves with joy a magnificent second half performance in which they scored two fine goals then lost one held on and they've won the cup Jockstein congratulating all the Hibs players down below us as they come in Steen in a handshake for every one of the Hibs players Pat Stanton going in to get the cup. United we stand here. Divided we fall. We play for each other. When we're on the ball. Our fans are the greatest. They cheer us each game. We're tumbles.
I was in first year of school, Pat was in fourth year, him being older than me. Uh, <laughs> Pat was right half and captain of the firsts, uh -huh. and I was a scrubber uh -huh. in the wee team. But eventually I teamed up with him, uh -huh. and uh, the rest is history, I yeah. imagine, Tony. Of course, you must know, having played with him for something like 15 or 16 years, you must know his special attributes. Oh, Pat had um, great attributes. He had no pace, he had no left foot, <laughs> um, he couldn't tackle on his left side. Um, he had mince pie and beans for his tea every night. But uh, in saying that, he was the best, or the second best, player I've ever played with. <laughs> Joe Baker was the best, but Pat jo was the second oh, best. Oh, Joe Baker was the best, yeah. Uh, of course, you played with some great players at Easter Road at the time, and Pat has mentioned Willie Hamilton. Who in your mind, apart from Joe, was the real star in those days? Uh, Lane, my... Pat was a better player. Pat, all round. Pat served the Hibs for mm -hmm. many, many years. Mm -hmm. And to me, was uh, a credit to the game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to football. To, to, to the, if you're a wee laddie and you say, go and watch somebody, watch Pat Stanton. Mm -hmm. His attributes, to me, were excellent for any kid to try for. And in all the great characters you played at the road, Jimmy, any funny stories about any particular one of them? Ah, there's a guy called Tony Higgins. Uh, <laughs> It was, it was his big slim boy, the big yes, slim boy. Yes, yeah. it was his birthday in Benidorm, and uh, he got a litre liter, uh, of uh, lager and he poured it over Wilson off his head. That was a good one, Tony. <laughs> he was assistant manager at the time, I thought. Yes. That's right. <laughs> oh, Tony's too, many, too numerous to mention. Yeah. Do you think I resembled you for pace at any stage? Well, sometimes when we were going backwards, Tony, you know. <laughs> Now, you obviously played in the League Cup final, uh, winning side, Arthur, and you have some great memories at Easter Road. Uh, what particular memory do you have on European nights? Um, European nights, I suppose it would be the team when we beat Sporting Lisbon 6-1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that was the best night we had, you know. Mm -hmm. Did any of your crosses get in the goal that night? No, I hit a few pickpockets, but never <laughs> mind, you know. <laughs> uh, we've also here tonight, we've got uh, big John Brownlee, known as Onion, who scored that famous goal in the semi-final League Cup tie, John. Would you like to talk us through it? Talk you through it? It's that long ago, Tony. I can't remember it. <laughs> remember you got it on the right-hand side? Got it on the right-hand side. And Eddie said, get up the effing park. Aye. Yeah. I only did what I could do with the ball, that saved me getting back. <laughs> I just stick it in the net, that saved me running back. <laughs> now you and me, Alec Edwards, of course, had a, a great affinity as players and, and also off the park because you were drinking mates. Any stories about we, Alec? There's a few stories, but I don't think the people would like to, to hear about him because they think he's a nice little chap. <laughs> what special memories do you have of that time? With the Hibs? Yes. Obviously, probably, oh, the Scottish Cup finals when we, we played the three and got beat, mm -hmm. even with you scoring, Tony, we still, right. we still couldn't manage to win the game, you know. 
But that was one of my... I never played in the Scottish Cup final before, so... Mm -hmm. In all my 20 odd years of playing football, I think that was my biggest highlight of my career, mm -hmm. I would think, anyway. I won, I won a, a trophy with Dundee, but uh, ah, playing for more own yeah, team, you know, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. more important. Now, obviously, you played against Pat Stanton on many occasions. What did, how did you rate him as a player? Oh, he's a tremendous player. He was terrible to play against, but he was a tremendous player. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. fan, but first-class mm -hmm. player. I mean, any, and also, also, of course, he played at Easter Road with some of the great characters in Scottish football. Yourself. Any, well, <laughs> any special stories about them? Uh, characters at Easter Road. Well, Ali McLeod was a character. Uh -huh. I think if Ali was... Um, is Ali coming tonight? Nobody knows if Ali McLeod's coming tonight. I, he I was a real know. character. Mm -hmm. But I was quite fortunate to play with a lot of good players at Easter Road. Mm -hmm. Characters under Eddie Turnbull was sometimes a bit of a hardship because you weren't allowed to play, you had to play real football <laughs> under Eddie, you know? <laughs> but... Um, I don't know, I think um, in general, Arthur Duncan, John Brownlee, John Blackley, they're all, they had their own characters. Yeah, but, but mem remember the great story when, we, when George Best came oh, and we were playing at St Mirren and uh, yeah. at the end of the game that uh, the manager was making accusations that a certain player on the team wasn't passing to, to George Best. Mm -hmm. And the Monday morning, of course, it was revealed that that player was Ali McLeod. Correct. And I confronted him in the dressing room. Ali, were you the person that wasn't passing to George Best? You know, and Ali, of course, looked at me and says, he couldn't lace my boots, remember? <laughs> That's true, though. <laughs> That's, yeah, That's true. true. That was typical Ali McLeod. Uh, That's what I'm saying. He is a, he was a uh, character, Ali, you know? And also, I mean, I'll never, for, for you, George, I'll never forget the time we were playing in the, the Scottish Cup quarterfinal against Hearts at Easter Road. Uh -huh. And uh, you scored that day, remember? Yeah, I've got the ball. Tom, Tom, the late Tom Hart gave me the ball after the match, and I've still got it in the mm -hmm, house. Mm -hmm. but rem remember your comment before the game that day, as you stood out at five to three at the dressing room with the ball in your hand. Can you talk us through it? Well, I, my philosophy when I played against the Hearts was this is just a walk in the park for us. So <laughs> it was good for me. You know, I, I didn't need playing the Hearts as a, uh -huh. a, a, a sort of a local rival. It didn't uh -huh. really particularly uh -huh. bother me. Uh -huh. But um, scoring the goal in that game and. Big Gordon scored the, the second goal. Big Gordon Ray scored that's the second I goal. I made both of them, that's right. That's yeah. you made both of them that's as usual. Right, yeah, too, yeah. You know. you could, you, obviously, it wasn't a third late game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was great memories for me, and I was happy to take us through. Or one of my goals, or my goal, was helped us get through to the, uh -huh. the semi finals, you know. Well, well, thanks very much, George. It's been great to see you tonight, and we're all here to honour Pat, and we hope that it goes very well and the video as well. Thank God you. God bless the Hibs. And you were involved in the swap over when you actually came to Easter Road and Pat went to Parkhead. Do you want to tell us about it? Uh, I think if I'd known it was Pat, Tony had asked for a hell of a lot more money. I thought it was you that was coming to Parkhead at the time. And maybe that's why I get so little money. He also said that uh, Jockstein had told Pat to put a, a coat over his head, is that right? Well, I came out of Celtic Park after having signed for Hibs. And uh, when I was walking down through the car park, I saw Alan Gordon and Pat Stanton. And I was just a naive 25 year old. 24 year old and uh, I wondered why they were going up to the office with the coats over their head. I didn't realise I was swapping for another human being. <laughs> a legend. <laughs> a legend. <laughs> a legend as well. Uh, uh, and of so it was rather difficult at uh, mm -hmm. the start of my career, you know. Mm -hmm. I think they booed me before I got to Easter Road. Are the players? Uh, players, players, fans. <laughs> Eddie Turnbull. <laughs> we also have uh, uh, Bobby Smith here who was, of course, plied his trade at Easter Road for uh, quite a long time too long, many Hibs fans would say, but of course you, you enjoyed it uh, and of course as a kid you must have enjoyed the skills of Pat Stanton. That's right, uh, Pat was uh, a great inspiration to a lot of young players, uh, great professional, mm -hmm. uh, taught you a lot, mm -hmm. great ambassador for uh, the Benny Football Club. Mm -hmm. And also you had a great relationship with Eddie Turnbull, remember that quite vividly Bobby? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yes, I just love, 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 love hate relations with me and Eddie, yeah, he didn't like my bangles and bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> hair dryers, yeah. hair dryers. <laughs> <laughs> I used to actually remember used to be after some of the games that uh, Jackie was like me and Jackie was a real character and we both relied on our personalities and our looks but you, you, and, you and Willie Murray and, uh, and Alistair Brazil used to spend a bit of time a, a bit of time at the mirror didn't you? Yeah we get near from Harley, Harley was uh, obviously a good looking child, I don't know if he's coming here or not, I don't uh, know. Uh, uh. But the hair dryers used to be blasting every after any tra training session so. Uh -huh. And of course, that, uh, we all played with, with George Best, uh, not in the literal sense, but we all played with George Best. And what were your special memories of George, Bobby? I didn't play him, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good enough memory. Never rely on Jim Hossack. The Jim Hossack is a terrible foundation. The George, man. Best, the yes. George Best came after I left. And Jackie, of course, and I was telling the story earlier about, in conversation with George Stewart about Ali McLeod's remarks about, uh, about George. About Ali being a better player? Yeah, yeah. Did you think oh, so? I thought, uh, well. <laughs> It was fun. He was a wee bit quicker. Uh, he would have left the can at the Rangers game. He wouldn't have picked it up because it wasn't a lager. Uh, now, Ali, Ali McLeod was a great player as well. Very mm -hmm. underestimated. 
Murdo, you spent most of your playing career with Celtic, of course, but you're now at Easter Road. Are you enjoying the reception you've received from the Hibs fans? Yes, it's been a great reception. Mm -hmm. They've been very loyal this season, despite mm -hmm. the re results we've had. Mm -hmm. the travelling support's been very good as well. Mm -hmm. you know, it's been behind the team. So you just hope that we'll be able to play to reward them in the future. And obviously, that uh, as a kid like me, you grew up in the Glasgow area, uh, you obviously must have admired Pat Stanton as a football supporter. Well, obviously, at that time, Hibs were one of the big forces in Scottish football. And I was only 14 stone then, I remember. <laughs> and I was going back a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're a young boy and you're looking across at the, such a good Hibs side and uh -huh. you look at a player like Pat Stanton, you now he was like one of the continental sweepers just now. Mm -hmm. So good on the ball, comfortable mm -hmm. on the ball, great passer. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the game nowadays needs players like Pat Stanton. Mm -hmm. well, of course, we have Andy Gorham here as well. I mean, Andy, you're a great hero to the, the football supporters in Edinburgh. One section of them, anyway. Uh, Pat Stanton had that special rapport with them. What's special about the Hibs supporters? I think they stick by, like you said. Meadow said um, they follow through thick and thin. We've had a lot of bad times this season. We've had a lot of bad times this, this last few years, but they keep turning out, and I think and, uh, they, they deserve a wee turn. Mm -hmm. but, um, we could do with a few Pat Stanton's mm -hmm. come and give us a shot, you know. And obviously you enjoyed your time. One of the great things about the Pat Stanton era was the, the time they had in Europe. You must have enjoyed the experience in Europe with Hibs as well recently. Oh, the, Euro the European thing was unbelievable. I've never won a trophy in my life and then end up playing in Europe and we had three great, well, four great, great games. Um, we've done video time and that. I've never experienced winning a trophy. My has always got more experience than that. Mm -hmm. But um, Pat Stanton's one of these players. If you can get the likes of Pakistan and George Stewart, all these players that have done it years ago. Mm -hmm. If you could get them in the team now, mm -hmm. never you're not doing Tony too Higgins bad, you know? Never mentioned Tony Higgins there. Who's that? Did he ever play? Did he play? <laughs> Who's Tony Higgins? Is he a goalkeeper? <laughs> I don't know. Is he a wall? <laughs> He's a back four. No. I, I, I direction I used to be a, a two-man wall, extended about 40 <laughs> feet across the park. <laughs> but so therefore, you've got a message of encouragement for the, the Hibs fans in the future then? Yeah. I At think the end of the day, it can't get any worse. We, we can only get it's better. Amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is really. It can only get better. Um, Naturally, that evening at the Sheraton brought memories flooding back of the dramatic events of the summer of 1990, when the very existence of Hibernian Football Club was threatened. But Hibs supporters fought and won what amounted to the greatest victory in the history of a famous club. Hibernian will never die, not when their fans are counted among the finest and most loyal on air. For generations of highbies who, across the decades, had stood in those dear old Easter Road terracings, admiring the skills of the green and white giants of yesteryear, and for those kids born to uphold the great tradition, it was an emotional time. A time when sorrow and deep anxiety mingled with great joy. A time when the Bernian fans of all ages realised just how much this grand old club meant to them.
coming forward slips Dave Johnson that's a good ball Bremner the great save Smith Smith the long last for him earlier after 39 minutes makes him one Dundee nil crossfield ball but uh, Burnley struck by Shedler, but Burnley keeps in. He's got the time and the space to do it. Edwards. McLeod! Oh, sheer bit of football brilliance by Ali McLeod. The crowd rise to the hip centre. Eight minutes gone in the second half, hips to Dundee nil. a bit of trouble and Hibbs beginning to capture that midfield area Duncan in the middle number three four minutes to go plus a little bit of injury time Stuart trying to knock it in but it's hooked away by Stanton loose exploit the chance the blowout lighting up the shot and it's just need away by Johnston the blowout again showing how dangerous he is and the quick corner Brownlee and it's finally gone home for Pat Stanton he's delighted with that Hibbs have gone into an unassailable lead by four goals to nil with three minutes remaining. Steen again. Matheson trying to keep the player between the Rangers goal and away from the Rangers goal, but a corner. It's Quinn. Stevenson. shot by Stevenson but the marking of the Rangers defense there very very suspect Stevenson unmarked as he shot the ball with his left foot right into the back of the net Quinn with the corner flicked on and a header in by McGraw and a fine goal that equalizes the score and at last Hibernian have broken their duck by a good goal from the corner by Pat Quinn, headed on by Steen and Alan McGraw there. Alex Scott hugging the touchline. Steen heads and he scores! Excellent goal. Steen still hanging in, clinging into that ball. On it goes to Carmack, and a goal, surely it is. And fine goal, all credit to Steen. He hung in after that ball when Stewart should have put it into touch, but Carmack, given credit for the smart way he allowed that ball to go through his legs, swivel. 3-1 in favour of Hibbs, and 20 minutes of the second half gone.
Ball put back under the tracks of Steen. He's got a chance. Cormac's up with him. Cormac straighting in a goal. Oh, he loses his chance. Numbers there. Sir Harrell's out of the goal. It's goal. Oh, what trouble. Dundee defence was in there. Brownlee to Edwards. Horror. Keeper came out, Hazel. Well, that was a mistake in the middle of the field here. Edwards pushed it quickly through to Horror. Hazel, who was the only Hibs man up there, wasn't properly marked, and he had an easy job to score. It's Hibs throw. Taken by Hazel. Edwards. Tremendous goal by Edwards. Edwards at an angle. Appeared not to have a line of shot at all, but he certainly smacked that one in with the side of his foot. 2-0 for Hibbs. Edwards, master of these uh, dead ball situations. Hibbs, five men in the box. In goes Stanton. He's done it again.